And the prayer for today comes from Romans 8, 24, 25. For in hope we have been saved, but hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, with perseverance we wait eagerly for it. This is the word of the Lord. Lord God, I thank you for the Christmas season because it does remind us of the hope we have in you. Father, do give rest and do give peace to those who have a hard time in this season. God, you are truly great in the midst of this church. I thank you. I thank you, Lord, for the church. Your, your, your name is exalted here. Let the dreams that you have placed in pastor give birth in his gift. Let the dreams that you have placed in his heart give birth. Father, we pray that as we look into your word, God, you reveal the truth. Teach us to worship. May your praise always be in our lips. Unveil the truth of, our, of your word and let us apply it to our lives for your praise and for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name. And so today is the second Sunday in our Advent series. I want to thank Carmen and her family for doing a marvelous job coming up here and reading scripture and setting the mood for our Advent, the patience. That's what we read in Romans. And last week, we started with the Advent anticipation. And Advent, if you don't know what that is, are the Sundays that lead up to Christmas. And last week was the anticipation of Christmas, is what we looked at. In last Sunday's message, we reviewed three points that I want to quickly highlight as we start this Sunday so that we can connect the dots. And so we covered... Well, how do you anticipate Christmas? How do you wait for that? How do you get ready to share the good news of Christmas with others? How do you do that? Well, the first way we do that is you got to look at the past, don't you, as you look at Christmas. We looked at how in biblical history the birth of Christ was prophesied and anticipated by all those people. But I also asked you to look at your past. Think about your past and see how God has worked in yours. Next is to look at God in the present. How is he working in the present? In Psalm 46, the psalmist says, our God is our present help. God is, can you see him in your present working and helping you? Now listen, you're going to have to look at God working your past in order to see him work in your future, aren't you? I, I, I can remember many times looking at my past and only having anger towards God. Only being hurt with Him and frustrated at God. And the reality is, I was blaming the wrong person, right? Yeah. Satan is the one that brings death and harm. But it was me being the bonehead that was uh, sinning. But I was really angry about, listen up. Because I think many of us have done the same thing and are even doing it today. And that is that in God's love and mercy, we are angry at God because we got caught. That's why we're angry at God. We got caught. Caught in our sin. Caught in our disobedience. And so we blame God for ruining our fun. For stopping our pursuit of our own selfishness. And yet, it is and was God's mighty hand, not so much stopping us, but putting a pause just putting a pause in our tracks for our good. And so we can look at our present, at our today, 
and we can start to see God at work. And last, when we look at our past, see God in our present, well then, that gives us the assurance of our future. Isn't that right? If you look at your past and your present, you can start looking at your future with God. You know it's funny, but I can remember showing my son, giving him directions to go to a certain place anywhere, really. And you know what he'll do? He'll take that same way, even though it might be a little bit longer. Now, let me say something. He did that, and many of us have done the same thing too, right? Think about that. Because you knew the way of the past was correct. It was the right way to go. And that gave you the confidence then to go again to that place. That's what we do with the Lord as Christians, right? We look at our past and are strengthened in our today so that we can have the confidence to move into our future. And so if you missed last Sunday's message or any others, I want to encourage you to go to our YouTube channel. Just type in Mesa Place Church El Paso for it or any of the others that you might have missed. And so today's sermon title is Patience. Patience. Let me take off my coat. The Advent Patience. Now I know all of you are kind of hoping I give a message on how to be patient with friends and family, how to be patient at your Christmas parties, how to be patient doing your Christmas shopping, but that's not the message today. But I can give you some hope in those areas if you want it, so you may want to write this down, look at the first verse that we have. So if you have your Bibles, go ahead and take them out. If you need a Bible, go ahead and raise your hand, and one of the ushers will get one to you. Thanks, David. Look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. This is one of the most incredible, difficult scriptures in all the Bible. Peter, Peter, Paul tells us, don't stop praying. In those areas that you're having difficulty in shopping and in, 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 in the people that live with you, in the, in the parties that you're going to go to, let me give you some advice. Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. And if you ain't doing that, then you're doing the rest of Christmas all wrong. Can I get an amen? Two jokes that I want to share with you about shopping and patience that I ran across. A man got his wife a diamond ring, and his buddy said, I thought your wife wanted an SUV. He replied, she did, but I can't find a fake Jeep. It'll hit you, it'll hit you. A little girl was sitting on Santa's lap at the mall, and she was staring at him without saying anything. Santa finally asked, well, what would you like? And she replied, horrified, didn't you get the email? Ah, patience, patience. I think patience is in really short supply, and especially during the holidays. Why? Because we want. We, we even believe that we require things fast, don't we? And when it doesn't, right, we, we hate Amazon and everybody attached to that. We don't like it. But I can't tell you how many times in my life it was during those delays, those times I had to stop and wait, those times I had to kind of regroup and then start going the other way. Can I get an amen? That so much hurt and frustrations were avoided. And I bet if you look at your life, you can too. And so why don't we have more patience? Two words, if you want to write these down. Why don't you have more patience? Selfishness and pride. Isn't that right? Those are the two reasons why you have no patience. People are looking at each other and kind of jabbing each other right on the sides. Ah, you don't have any patience? It's either because you're selfish or you're prideful. But that's the reason, right? Those two things in my life have caused so much harm, some of which I'm still trying to dig out of. Now, some are wondering, what does patience have to do with Christmas? And I got to say, I'm not sure. Well, of course not. Of course I know what it means. It, but I want you to consider this. Waiting. Waiting is the hardest part, isn't it? Think about this now. Waiting is what drives us crazy and really is what makes us lose our patience. Isn't that right? Now, I can remember as a kid waiting during Christmas. You all will remember, right? Some of us, maybe 50 years ago. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Trying to find those hidden gifts in the house. Going under the tree and seeing all those unmarked gifts. Picking them up the packages and trying to guess which one was going to be mine. Gently shaking them. Okay, sometimes breaking them. And I do 
all that because of the reason that you do it. And that is because you knew one of those was for you. That's why you were doing that. And that soon you'd know and hopefully, hopefully be filled with joy and excitement because sometimes I just get some socks. And so we do all that because the waiting, right? That's why we're doing that. The waiting is the hard part, right? Now, let me connect the dots here. You see, these four weeks that lead to Christmas, it serves a purpose, prophetically speaking. This anticipation, which we started last Sunday, and so these anticipation Sunday weeks lead up, spoiler alert, they lead up to Christmas Day. Now, here is the connection. Knowing what is in store, right? Stay with me. Knowing what is in store doesn't make the waiting any easier, is it? This is patience of Christmas. It is a reminder of something happened already, and yet every year we have this waiting time, the patience of Christmas Day. Now, I want to share two specific characters that patiently waited for that Christmas arrival. There's a, a bunch of people that were waiting, but two in particular. It's Simeon and Anna. Simeon and Anna. These guys, they served at the temple. It is speculated that Anna lived there as well. And, and so let me set this up a bit. You see, Jesus, at this time of the story, uh, Simeon and Anna, Jesus is a newborn baby. We're told in the verses that precede the one that we're going to look at that his parents waited the customary eight days before going and presenting that baby Jesus at the temple on account of the law. And so it's during this first visit that Jesus makes, is taken to the temple by his parents, that we will see Simeon and Anna. Let's look at Luke chapter 2, verse 25 through 26. Luke chapter 2. Verse 25 through 26. I got to get some coffee. I was up late last night with the youth. Uh, Luke tells us of this encounter. He says, and there was a man in Jerusalem whose, whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout. Looking for the consolation of Israel. Now, that means that historically, Simeon was waiting for the Messiah, the Savior. That's what he's doing there. He's not just serving there, but he's waiting for the consolation. He's actually doing this. Why? Here we go. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. That's the why. Verse 26. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Wow. Now, let's look at Anna. Jump down to verses 36 and 37. Who is Anna? And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years and lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then as a widow to the age of 84, meaning she was married for seven years, her husband dies, and from that point on up to 84, where we're going to catch up with the story, is when she was serving the Lord. It says there, she never left the temple, serving night and day with fastings and prayers. Simeon and Anna, in a nutshell, these were godly people. Godly people. They were of good character and were blessed by God. And so God does an amazing thing for them because of the waiting and patience that they were exercising. They weren't exercising in, in, in themselves, not because they were patient people, but because of how they waited. This is very important, how they were waiting. They waited upon the Lord, you see. Some of us just wait. They were waiting on the Lord. And we'll see this in a bit. And oh boy, I don't think I've ever been so happy to preach on patience more than I am today. Tell you what. Want to have a low attendance on Sunday morning? Tell people you're going to preach on patience. But I'm here to tell you what. I am excited on this one. I really am. I am excited about the patience because of what it means to us as Christians. In a nutshell, we are waiting and are patient because we know that God gets the glory and works all things to those who wait upon the Lord. 
we can go into the waiting time knowing the outcome. God wins, and so do we. So five things I want to share with you this morning about waiting. First thing in your outline, if you want to go ahead and take them out, our waiting develops patience, you see. When you're waiting on the Lord, it's going to develop something. It develops patience. Some of you are looking at me going, what the heck is he talking about? Why? Because some of you all don't even know what that means. And yet, show of hands, I want to see your hands. How many of you have had times that you've gone through the same thing, the same trouble over and over, and you know the reason why is because of your lack of patience? How did I do that? I remember my uncle, we were, we, were, we were nailing some stuff and we just wanted to finish and he nailed his thumb three times in a row. He's like, dude, calmao. But listen, listen, listen. You think you're waiting, you see, you're going to get holy on me, is praying for like a day or two, maybe even a week. And occasionally you're reading the word of God, but no, waiting is exactly that. It is waiting on the Lord. You know, I, I, I get it. Sometimes we are put into situations that we aren't allowed to wait, right? But I bet you have more times that you can wait, but you don't. Because you have not developed patience. You haven't developed patience. God's told you to do something, and you haven't developed patience. Just this week, I was speaking to Manny and Carmen. I came in, and I caught them cleaning these knucklehead I love them, but they cleaned each and every one of these light bulbs. Can you imagine that? I came in, I'm like, oh my gosh, it's like a circus act. So anyway, yeah, I, you should have seen my face. I was like, uh, I'm walking out of here. But anyway, so I'm speaking to Manny and Carmen, and we're discussing that as a pastor and that as ministry leaders, okay, listen to me, we can do so much damage to others by not waiting, just waiting. And that my, my, that same night, I was asked if I could speak to someone that offended me. And I said, you know what, let, let me just wait. Let me wait, because I know something. I need patience before I open my big old stupid mouth. I really do. Because listen to me, my pride gets in the way, and people are way more important than my pride. People are way more and and should be more important than my pride and your pride. And I'm learning. I'm finally learning. Look at Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still and know that I'm God. This is one of the most action-oriented verses in all of Scripture. Some of you are saying, Pastor, are, 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 you, are, are you smoking pot? What's going on? It just says to stop. You're not looking. That's why. How many of you have seen those weird modern pictures? It's all discombobulated and stuff. And, and, and you can't see anything until you start focusing in on that one little image, that one little dot. Then you can see the whole thing and you're like, oh, wow, there's like a waterfall in that thing. I never knew that. You see, you can't see God working because you have no patience. You have no focus. And that is what the psalmist is telling us. He's telling us to do two things, to wait. And then to know God. You don't even know who he is while you're waiting. Some of you have no patience because you ain't waiting. And you know what? You're God. No. No, you're not God. And this is what Simeon and Anna were exercising. It, it, it is what they were doing. They were waiting on God and serving while waiting. And knowing that if God said it, then that's on God. That's not on them. They were waiting. I was listening, I think it was a Focus on the Family radio this week, and the speaker said that many of us as Christians are on a spiritual car, so to speak, right? We're, we're living life now, and, and we got this spiritual car, and he said, where is Jesus in your car? Is he in your trunk? Right? And so you kind of take him out on Sunday mornings, kind of comb his hair and stuff, right? Right? You're on the way to Bible study, and you take him out of the glove compartment, and then after you're done, you put them back in, and then you lose patience, and you hate everybody, right? Well, maybe Jesus is in your passenger seat, the guy said, right? Jesus is my co-pilot, like the country western song, right? Some of you already know where I'm going with this. 
Or is Jesus your driver? Oh, yes, 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 pastor, pastor. Jesus is the driver of my spiritual car, for sure, for sure. Then why are you backseat driving? Why are you backseat driving? L Lord, you want me to do this? No, 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 turn, turn left. This is the shortcut. The other way is way too long. No, 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 no. Oh, no, Lord. Golly, man, you waste a lot of gas, dude. See, waiting develops patience. And listen, it develops patience with God. It develops our patience with God. Oh, pastor, that's heretical. Oh, really? How many of you have lost patience with God? Thank you, honest people. You see, we lose patience with God. Second, patience, and this is the exciting part, I hope, will give some great courage about patience. Second, start waiting, knowing God's going to come through. You see, you don't know who God is, and so this is going to be difficult, but start waiting, and if God is asking you to do something, knowing God's going to come through. You see, that was the characteristic of Simeon and Anna. That's what they did. They weren't just waiting and kind of ticking off the days and weeks, months, maybe even years that were going by. No, right? While they were waiting, they knew that God was going to come through. And that is what Christmas teaches us, right? Knowing that someone has a gift for you, right? That's why you were excited. Like, e, carna, that one, that red one, it's mine. It's mine. Now, I know some of you had Christmases marked with heartache. I'm sure of it. This is why we try to make changes here at MPC to our community. Go to our community board. Be part of the change. But overall, can we all agree here today that the typical story is to get a gift, right? That someone's going to give you something good? Because I know when I say that, it's like, no, you don't know my past. Oh, okay. Let's just all agree that's the way it's supposed to be. And that is how we are to wait. Having patience, waiting, but knowing that God's going to come through. Check this out. I shared this last Sunday, but this is it, man. This is the one. Look at Jeremiah 29, 11. You want me to turn on the heater again? Is it getting a little cold? We can turn on the heater. Turn on the heater a little bit, Mr. Wrinkle. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and a hope. You see, it is while you wait that you make this scripture your heart condition. You see, someone needs to put this up so that you can see it daily, if not hourly, as you wait. Heck, David will tattoo it on your, in the inside of your eyelids. Maybe not that, but you see, it is while waiting... You got to start knowing that God's going to come through. Now, listen, listen, listen. If you're doing something while you're waiting that is not aligned with the biblical standard, then the waiting will also be a time of change. Isn't that right? As you're waiting and you're not aligned scripturally, you're sinning against the Lord. Your time of waiting is going to be a change in your life. Look at Hebrews. Um, you don't have to go there. Hebrews 12, 6. The Lord disciplines those that he loves. While you're wait, Hebrews 12, 6 tells us the Lord's going to discipline those that he loves. Proverbs 3, 12, the Lord corrects and disciplines those that he loves as a father does his children. See, listen, listen, listen. You may be stuck in the merry-go-round of problems. Anybody feel like that? You, you may be crashing and burning because God loves you and he ain't going to let you go past this thing in you until you get it. Until you get it. And oh, by the way, God is patient. But there is a time that he'll leave us to our own sin. And at that point, listen to me, there is no amount of waiting or patience that's going to help you. You better repent. Repent. And then wait on the Lord knowing that he's going to come through. You see, this is, this is why that whole name it and claim it, it, it's just not working. Because we wait on the Lord, not wait on the Lord in our selfish desires. Don't, don't worry, they'll, they'll fix the, the heater. Don't worry about that. We got to wait on the Lord, but without selfish desires. So first, wait develops patience in us. Second, waiting, but knowing that God's going to come through. And third, those who wait will not be ashamed. Third in your outline. This is awesome, by the way. Those who wait will not be ashamed. And this really speaks to me, and I hope... 
to some of you that are still waiting, like Simeon and Anna. Because ignoring and putting things off isn't the same as, as waiting. Can I get an amen? amen? You see, listen up. Many times while you are waiting, okay, stay with me. Many times while you wait, you will be the only one that knows why you're waiting on the Lord. Sometimes when God has asked you to wait in, in a certain season in your life, you might be the only one that knows. I was with our music team a couple weeks back. Uh, don't they do just an awesome job on Sunday mornings? They, they, you guys do so good. Thank you, guys. And, and in our last meeting, you guys will remember, one of our team members said this, Pastor, man, I, I was questioning why you were doing this and why you were waiting and allowing this thing to happen here. And that's the hook, isn't it? Many of us, me included, I don't, I don't always wait on the Lord. But when I do, it makes me yell, yay, God, yay. But here's the thing. While you wait, just like Simeon and Anna, you may be the only one of maybe a couple that might be waiting and knowing. Look at Psalm 22, 5. They cried to you and were delivered. Wow. They trusted in you and were not ashamed and we're not ashamed and really this is this is one of many but one of the great benefits of being a christian of putting our hope in christ and what i mean is waiting and patience without god is just so shallow it's just shallow and actually even as christians we can get sucked into doing this on our own isn't that right just waiting and having patience but when it's a god thing when you're waiting on the lord Man, you see the blessings, not just in your life, but how it impacts the lives of others and ultimately how God gets the glory. And that is such a trip to me. Maybe I shouldn't be tripped out, but I still get jazzed up when I see people getting victory in the Lord. And so how do you know are you waiting on the Lord? How do you know that it's a, it's a God thing? Well, if in what you are waiting for, is it aligned with God's will? Isn't that right? Is it aligned with God's will? One of the places, if you don't know if you're in God's will, you can go and check this out. Start with the Ten Commandments. Hello. Pretty easy. Right? I don't know if it's God's will. Is it in one of those? Right? Right? Are we planning, right, just to go against God? No. Where is that? We're going to go into a 10-week series maybe in January on the Ten Commandments, so don't wait until then. Go and check that out. <laughs> but in a nutshell, the first four commandments are honor God, and the other six are honor God's creation. The first four are honor God. This is why we honor Him. The next six are honor His creation. I, because I don't know. We're living together. You're not honoring His creation. It's right there. You see? You can also come to speak to me or one of our leaders for help and direction. But I can guarantee you this from firsthand experience. If you wait on the Lord, you will not be ashamed. If you're going to wait on the Lord, you won't be ashamed. And fourth, and very quickly, fourth, God is good to those who wait and are patient. Did you know that? God is good to those who wait and are patient right like christmas gifts right if you're good and you wait i'm going to get you a little something right don't we tell the kids that stop looking if you're good i'll go get you a little hot wheel yeah we get a gift before the gift but we do that right why because you're being good and god does the same thing to us isn't that amazing See, in your waiting and learning patience, did you know that God is good to you? And this isn't the, the same as the point that we just covered. Simeon was told by the Lord that he would live to see the Christ. He was going to live up to that point. Now, I'm not condoning to do this, but I, but I just imagine having that information in my life. I'd be kind of like bulletproof and crossing the freeway, right? <laughs> Walking and stuff like, I'm not going to die. I'm going to see Christ. I'm not saying to do that. Now, let me say something here. And, 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 and I do so, so that you can understand this point. I'm in no way complaining, okay? Don't misunderstand me, please. 
I, I've helped other church startups in my life. I've helped other churches. But of course, this is the only time I'm, I'm the one on the hook, okay? You all with me? But there are times here at this church that the pressure is intense. It's intense. It really is. Uh, and you guys are like, it's such a small church. We've dealt with things you can't even imagine. Family, lies, corruption. Man, hard stuff. The amount of work, the heartache that I experience with, with, with some of you is completely intense. And then add on to that the administration of the building, the finances, dealing with ministry leaders, which ones we have, which ones we don't have yet. I'll go to the Lord and I'll say, Lord, you have me here. You gave me that desire in my heart. This is your work, your ministry. And, and Lord, I know if, if this is yours and you are good, regardless of what's going on, Lord, you're good. Look at Lamentations chapter 3, verse 24 through 26. Lamentations 3, 24 through 26. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I hope in Him. The Lord is good to those who wait for Him, to the soul who seeks Him. See, are you seeking Him? It is good that one should hope and wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. I love that. Wait quietly. There it is. No complaining. No bickering. Wait on the Lord and go to the Lord. And the Lord is good. Amen. Now listen, listen, listen. Linda. Also going to a godly person and sharing is good, okay? I, I, I don't want you to think that you're disqualifying yourself to do that. Because we know that God puts people in our lives. They become the hands and feet of Jesus. Can I get an amen on that? And so waiting, listen to me, develops patience in our lives and with God. Start knowing that God's going to come through if he asks you to do something. Wait on God. is not going to bring you shame. Waiting on him. And God is good to those who wait and are patient and last. And this is really how Christmas works to remind us as believers. Fifth, wait with watchfulness to the work of God. As you're waiting, watch for the work of God. You know, when, when we're all gathered around the tree at Christmas time, think about you and your family. I don't know how you all do it. In our family, we, 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 we open up the Christmas gifts for the kids on Christmas Eve. On Christmas Day is when, when we do the little Gorilla thing at our house, right? And, and you know, that's when, as a kid, all that sneaking around, right? Think about this. Checking which one might be yours. You're going to get the payoff at that point, right? Right? Christmas Day was when everyone was going to get the payoff. Or, or maybe you knew what was coming already. And, 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 and so you wait to get it. And so you're watching for that one gift. And that's what I need. You know you're going to get it. God has told you to do something. That's the anticipation. You've been, you've been looking and, 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 and figuring it out. And here's the day. As you're waiting... Wait with an eye watching to see the work of God as you're waiting. Wait to see God moving as you're waiting. You know, Jesus, in his ministry, did this all the time. All the time. In, in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, you don't have to go there, but it's the, the story of Zacchaeus, a wee little man. There's nothing wrong with being a wee little man, by the way. Some of you... Well, I remember the story, and this is very interesting to me, how Christ worked on earth. And this is a great example. He said, Jesus said, I only do what I see my Father in heaven doing. Isn't that the trip? What in the world does that mean? And, and so in Luke is this great story that I just told you. So Jesus, he, he, he's coming through Jericho, you see, and he's, on, he, he, he's, he's the talk of the town. Of course, right? And so there's this huge crowd, and Zacchaeus, he's a tax collector, he's very wealthy, and he wants, to, he wants to take a look at this Jesus. He obviously had heard of him, right? And so Zacchaeus goes out, and he can't see. He can't see. He's a little man. Ain't no shame. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Ray, somebody give me an amen. Amen. The other Ray. The other, that other Ray, I don't know what he ate. He's huge. And so this guy, he goes up to this tree, and here's the thing. 
You see, a man in Zacchaeus' status, this was not a cool thing for him to do. He was wealthy. But, 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 there's all this crowd. There's this huge crowd. People are going on trees, on rooftops. And Jesus spots this man, Zacchaeus, and stops at the tree and says this, Come down, for today I must stay at your house. Jesus is passing through. He's not supposed to be there. He's just passing through. Why? Jesus is waiting on God the Lord for his purpose and his plan. And Jesus sees God working by the Holy Spirit in this hated, wealthy, outcast of a man. Jesus knew that it was cool because Jesus was watchful to the work of God. And Simeon and Anna were too. And this is so cool. Okay, okay, check this out. Here's the boom. Here's the boom. Check this out. Look at Luke chapter 2, verse 28 through 32. And then we're going to jump down to 38. So get ready. Let me set this up. Everybody wake up. Here we go. Here's the hook. Here we go. Simeon has been told by God that he would see Jesus, right? He's going to see the Christ. And this is the day. Okay, this is the this is the day and, and, and was watching for the work of God continually. You, you all with me? Say amen. amen. And he says this in verse 28 and 32. He, he, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, look at verse 29. Lord, now, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all peoples, a light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people, Israel. Okay, okay, okay. Simeon, listen to me, is holding the Christmas gift. Jesus, the Jesus he was waiting for. He, he was serving the whole time and living, knowing God would come through. And this is the day. This is the boom. And guess who else is there? Anna, Anna, look at verse 38. And coming in, that instant, she gave thanks to the Lord and spoke to him, Jesus, and to all those who looked for the redemption in Jerusalem. You see, listen, listen, listen. God's timing is always perfect. Okay? Y'all with me? Come on. Y'all stay with me. God's timing is always perfect. What has God asked you to do? What has he asked you to join him in and endure? Think about this in your life. What has he asked you to do? And if you are waiting on the Lord, watching to see the work of God in and around you, you will be ready and you will be blessed when it happens. You see, Simeon, had he not, just think about that day, had he not, maybe he was just kind of having an off day, right? And the whole thing, like uh, another baby. Right? Anna could have been off too, right? Cleaning the stuff for the other people. I'm always cleaning. I'm always cleaning. But you see, they were on task. And since they were on task, God orchestrates this meaning and then becomes this song of praise. And it's the duo group of Simeon and Anna performing at the Jerusalem temple. That's the boom shagalaga. I love this song, the psalm of praise from Simeon. He says in verse 29, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. The work depart has a meaning in the Greek of a, of a prisoner being released. When they say depart, it's like a prisoner being released, right? We, we can imagine that, like, I get to go home? I get to go home? Right? It has the meaning of a ship that's, that's being untied to go on. It's, it's unyoking a horse that's a thoroughbred. Simeon and Anna are singing the Lord, and they're, they've waited, and they've been looking, and now they're free. They saw it. They saw it's the blessing. Not like a slave, but the payoff happens. And that is what Christmas reminds us of, right? You know, like the gifts that we wrap, right? Right? We, we, we wrap them to hide what's on the inside. The mystery is, what is it? That's the mystery. We wrap it because the person getting it isn't supposed to know yet. Yet. You're not supposed to know yet. And that is Christmas. The waiting is the wrapper. But, but, but you know what's in store, right? I hope it's going to bring joy and excitement. Don't give me any more socks. Right? You're not excited about the wrapping. 
Now, I know some of y'all weirdos say that, but, but right, y'all with me? The inside, the answer, right, to your waiting. You see, no matter if, if the waiting is a, is a well-wrapped gift, right? Your waiting time is a well-wrapped gift, or your waiting is more like a wrapper with, uh, with butcher paper, and the sides are all coming undone. Maybe that's kind of the way it looks. When you get the gift after waiting and exercising patience, it's such a blessing to you and to others. When you unwrap it and God gives it to you, you're like, ah, oh, look at that. Look at that. Let me start to wrap this up. I'm going to ask Robert to show off the, the lights. You see, listen, 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 listen. See, maybe God has brought you here because like Simeon and Anna, you get the gift of Christmas. Maybe, maybe you need to get the gift of Christmas before you die, right? Maybe you need Jesus before you die. Simeon did. He got Jesus before he died. And so if this is you, you, you need Jesus to save you, to put your hope and trust in this Christmas. Now, I'm, I'm going to ask everybody to pray. But if you've never prayed this before, I pray that it speak to your heart. Everyone say this, Lord, I'm sorry. I've sinned. I've let you down. But I want you in my life. Forgive me. Save me. Holy Spirit, come into my heart. I want to live now knowing and following you, Lord. And I thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. See, so you guys, that's it. Welcome to the family. If that's the first time you've ever prayed that, come up after service. I want to pray with you. Please come on up afterwards, all right? But you know, there are also those of us, let's be honest, <laughs> our waiting and our patience has caused so much harm. And we know we've caused harm in others, but mostly we let God down in what he was wanting to do in and through us. So with all eyes closed, close your eyes just for a moment. Bow your heads. No looking around, please. If this is you, you've lost patience and you're tired of waiting. You're a little fed up with God. And you realize that you haven't done your part. And your part's quite easy. It's seeking the Lord and waiting. If this is you, will you raise your hand if, if you want to make this Christmas a patient Christmas? I see you. I see you. I see you. I see you. If you haven't raised your hand, it's last chance. Go ahead. Lord, I pray for those of us that have raised our hands. Lord, that you would give us the strength that we need. And Lord, forgive us when we've made waiting an area that discourages us. We've made waiting an area that we're angry at you. But Lord, in our waiting, will you be kind and give us the strength we need to develop that patience? I know you can and that you will. Lord, forgive us when you've asked us to wait. And we have forgotten that you're the one that asked us to wait for this Christmas revelation. In our finances, in our relationships. Lord, give us the strength in starting to know that you're going to come through. Forgive us when we think that you can't come through. But Lord, we make this Sunday a declaration saying, today I know God's going to come through. Lord, you, you promise not to bring shame to us. And Lord, you promise that you will be good to those who wait and are patient. May that become real. But Holy Spirit, waken within us. A spiritual eye to watch for your work so that when it happens, we don't miss that opportunity 
And so when it happens that we can run to you and give you honor and glory instead of going the other day and missing another opportunity because we weren't looking for you. Forgive us when we're not looking for you. We've messed things up, Lord. And Father, you are faithful to those who love and are obedient to you. Make that become real in our lives. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to have a blessed week. It remind you to invite someone next Sunday as we look at the hope in Advent. Be blessed. Have a great Sunday.